Hi, my name is Dave, and we're going to take a look at this uh, home-built milling machine. This is a converted drill press, Harbor Freight Cheapo. I think it's brand new. They cost about 60 bucks. Uh, maybe you get a few bucks off of the, a coupon, which uh, is easy to get. Anyway, I have modified it. I moved the power button over to here. Uh, I needed to get it out of the way of some of this nonsense. I also had to cut off a piece here um, and put a... This is important. You have to put a lock in here. So this, it doesn't have, it need to have the fancy handle, but it needs to push against the, uh, the quill so that you can lock it down. It's difficult to mill with the quill bouncing all over the place. So um, those are a couple of changes. This whole mechanism here is all brand new, as you can see. I uh, had to uh, make a slow down feed. And this is not absolutely imperative, but it, believe me, it's very, very helpful. This drill press has served me well for many years, but it's uh, broken, and it's time to see if we can do something else with it. Repair it maybe using that little table at the bottom uh, use it as a milling machine for some light milling duty we'll see okay check out this spindle it's really badly bent we're going to see if we can replace that repair it at a very minimum maybe even turn it into a milling machine Okay, let's have a look at the run out on this thing. That's just the spindle. This came off my lathe, and I know it's truer than that from the lathe, so this is in the bearings. But also, look at this. If I just push this back and forth, I get a certain amount. There's no way to preload those bearings. The spindle just doesn't have such a feature. So I'm going to have to live with a certain amount of that three or four thousandths of just plain play in it. Okay, this is the old spindle bearing. Uh, goes inside this. This is the quill from the drill press. This slides right in there. It's not a real tight fit, but it's it's tight enough. So that's a that's that. This is the replacement bearing. This is a, a bearing that can take more lateral thrust. Here's a picture of one of these. As you can see, it didn't cost a whole lot, but it is a little bit longer this way. It goes from uh, about 10 millimeters up to about 16, actually 15.85 by this. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to bore that out. What I'm going to do is set this up in my, um, I think I'll set it up in my four jaw so I get a nice, precise, I can dial that into within a thousands. And, um, and then I can bore that down an additional six millimeters. Okay, let's try the run out now with uh, just an ordinary drill chuck. Very inexpensive drill chuck. It only cost me about five bucks. Here's a picture. Anyway, um, the drill chuck installed. The run out is <laughs> amazingly tight. It's like less than a thousandth or maybe a thousandth. However, that's not the whole story. There's more to this. Watch this. I can push on this and get probably play of about five thousandths both ways. It's, there's no mechanism and I am not going to bother to install a mechanism to preload the bearings in this thing. Um, and we'll just have to deal with it that way. It's going to have some wobble. I'll probably run into that once in a while, but it's really 
Probably not that bad. Let's try it out and see. Okay, here we go with the milling operation. This is about 1700 RPM. Well, it's not the finest milling machine in the world, but it's not that bad for what it cost. Okay, the plan for a uh, down motion, slow motion control is to have a worm and worm wheel here like this. I'll have to mount this, of course, where this uh, spindle is so i'm going to have to move that over a little bit and then this is going to be the worm gear well the worm gear needs a, some sort of a housing over here so i'm going to have to make something and what i'm going to make is this i've already got a rough cut um so this will go through there have a couple of bearings the uh, worm gear will go on there Uh, and so forth. And then this will uh, it'll have a pivot point right here and it will pivot up and down to engage and disengage. Okay, here's a close-up of the um, down feed mechanism I made. And I'm gonna, I've got, there's a lock back here that you can't see. But if we release this, now you've got a standard sort of a drill press motion. You engage this, lock it down, and now I've got the cheap set of gears engaged. Worm and worm wheel operation. And you can see it's getting pretty good slow down feed. And of course, you'd want to give it some down feed and then lock it up. All right, let me turn this around so you can see the locking mechanism. Here's the lock. Got disengaged, so let me pull that out. Locking it. This just pushes against the uh, the quill there. No big deal. If I loosen it up, so now I got regular action. I have to tighten this up over here to do the other. Anyway, um, and it's pretty simple, straightforward. Easy. It was easy to make. Easy to make these things.